Well, coming up on today's show, breakthroughs in battery technology. The 2021 Audi e-tron GT is driven on the streets of Los Angeles and helping car dealers make the most of EVs so they can help you. Well, good morning, good afternoon and good evening wherever you are in the world. Welcome along to EV News Daily. It's a Tuesday. It's a week today until the big day. 18th of December today. Martin Lee here. I've been through all the EV stories that I could find, whittled them down. These are the ones I think you need to know about. Thank you very much to myev.com for helping make this show they've only gone and built the world's first marketplace to help you buy and sell electric cars and nothing but evs you'll find none of those fossil cars on that website i'll have you know which does make buying and selling and learning about evs a much more pleasant experience when you know that every car you come across is going to be one that you really want check out myev.com Well, a breakthrough today on semi-solid lithium-ion batteries. Solid state gets people very excited. Uh, Keith Johnston is uh, bringing us this story today. He's the man behind Urban Electric and their on-street pop-up charging posts. He was tweeting about it earlier today. A long-awaited battery that could cut EV costs may finally be getting tantalizingly close the company is called 24m and they aim to simplify the design of a lithium iron battery you know in standard versions like the ones in a tesla the electrodes that carry current into and out of the cell itself well they're arranged as a series of layers and then then they're wound together into what's known as a jelly roll by using different materials 24m can cast electrodes that are four, even five times thicker, and immediately pair those anodes and cathodes together in the cell. This is reported by Technology Review. There's a lab-scale version of this, by the way, of 24M's battery, and the energy density of this is up to 300 watt-hours per kilogram. Now, the best batteries in EVs at the moment in the world, the best money can buy is 250 watt hours per kilogram that's real top end stuff right the company's also working on a different path that could create lithium ion batteries capable of reaching energy to de- energy densities of 500 watt hours per kilowatt hour fascinating developments always worth talking about Nothing ready to go inside a car yet, but you know that that pace of battery development is happening very quickly all around the world. The price is coming down of the existing technology, but the new technology. People get excited about solid state, like it's the it's this kind of miraculous fix that's going to have us all driving a thousand miles and charging for 30 seconds. But by the look of it, a lot of the work, a progress is being made with existing lithium ion batteries and actually finding out ways to make them just a whole load better it's a long article it's super geeky it's super nerdy i loved it if that's your kind of thing i'll put a link in the show notes Autoblog, amongst many others, have been driving the new Audi e-tron GT concept car around the streets of Los Angeles, and so valuable it is. They were given two police outriders to keep the likes of you and I, the general public, well away from it. I say they were given two police. I'm sure they they compensated uh, the city of Los Angeles uh, handsomely for providing their services. Uh, The Porsche Taycan is going to be next year. And while the Taycan might be the top-level iteration of the platform, the Audi e-tron GT is actually built on the same platform. And it's not just any old Audi. This is developed by Audi Sport, the performance division, formerly known as the Quattro division, says Autoblog. Now, sure, they have agreed, for the harmony of all working inside the VW group of companies, they've agreed to keep their distance from the Porsche Taycan. That's going to get all the headlines. So whereas the Porsche will make five, uh, sorry, 600 horsepower, the Audi team said, we won't, we won't eclipse that. So the e-tron GT will make 500 and 90 brake horsepower. The steering wheel is assumed to be pretty much a hexagonal shape, and that's how it's going to be on the production car. The centre console, well, the centre console is quite elevated, by the way. The gear selector is down where your, if you're in a left-hand drive car, your right hand would just rest in that sort of centre console, if you like, which just where your hand would rest. It's a really nice sort of sliding little sensor if you like there's there's been different ways of engaging the gear from the stalk in some cars to a button this is this is more like 
This is more like sliding sort of one of those sort of quick release catches on a lock, if you like. You sort of you pull it down and it springs up. You pull it down to engage drive and then it, it, it stays there. It's a lovely solution, by the way. Quite unique, not one I've seen before. There's paddles on the steering wheel. And yes, they are going for flappy paddles for the regen braking. There's three levels of that. Now, when it comes to market, which will be 2021, uh, top speed is going to be governed at 149 miles an hour. Well, why have they governed it? Well, the Porsche team wanted all the headlines, you see, so they've let them go ever so slightly faster. Bearing in mind, both of the cars built on the same platform. Now, the power goes to all four wheels through a one-speed transmission. Torque vectoring functions optimise traction in the corner. It's going to have that quattro, that four-wheel power. 800-volt system, as you know, on the Porsche Taycan. Same thing gets carried through to the Audi e-tron GT. Audi says 250 miles of range. So that is not the world's biggest battery. 90-kilowatt-hour battery. However... For a performance car, that has to balance efficiency and weight. Of course, batteries, more more range, more weight, right? So they put the fast-charging 800-volt system into it, and so if they've got enough chargers around Europe and around America that can charge quickly, well, why carry all of that weight with you if you can dash in, quickly top up, and off you go? I'm a real fan, by the way, of using the phrase miles per hour when it comes to charging. It's a number that means something to most people miles per hour how many miles do i get per hour of charging so the audi e-tron gt 600 miles per hour in other words you stop for 20 minutes you get 200 miles range on the 800 volt system i'll put a link to the auto blog article in the show notes if you want to read more it looks like a beautiful car it's utterly fantastic 21 inch wheels which will be 20 inches when it makes production apart from that though it's looking pretty production ready oh and on the test drive they were limited to 20 miles an hour by the sounds of it. Oh, and they couldn't go over any potholes or manhole covers because the suspension was pure concept car stuff. You must understand, they're making it ride low, right? Like it's been pimped. And for that, no bumps in the road, please. So they couldn't go fast. They couldn't really explore the limits of the car too much. But hey, I think it's cool that Audi let journalists in Los Angeles and, you know, and obviously thousands of people on the streets noticing it and taking pictures, having a go in a concept car that's worth, what, a million dollars? I don't know. Put a price on a concept car. There's only one of them. Well, moving on to a car that is well and truly here. Sort of. You can't exactly take one out of the showroom today in electric form, but you can in hybrid form. The Kia e-Nero comes in many different drivetrains and powertrains. Sean Ward at the Express newspaper has reviewed the Kia e-Nero for the UK market, saying there's loads of technology and safety kit as standard, and you get one trim level here in the UK from launch. Not sure if that'll be in the same in uh, North America and around Europe as well. It's called the First Edition e Nero. And you're going to get your nav system, your cameras, your DAB radios. So, DAB digital radio, like satellite radio, I guess, in the US equivalent, basically. It's like digital radio. Uh, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, aircon, heated seats, heated wheel. If you saw the fully charged video with Johnny Smith when he went to Korea to go do that, he was talking about how. Kia on the e-Nero have, like the Kia have just the one button touch to aim only the heat that's needed of the driver and just those vents that point towards the driver. So with your hot bum, your hot hands and just that on, it saves a lot of energy. You haven't got to heat the whole cabin if it's just you in the car. Now, here in the UK, also you get those systems to keep you in your lane. So you get your lane keep assist on the motorway, emergency braking, prices start at a, a whisker under 33,000, add in the government grant, which is for us free money. It's not a tax thing that you have to get involved in. It's just money off the car and then you get that suv for less than thirty thousand pounds it's very much a proper suv size as well and actually for the range if you can get 280 miles out of it you've got a very lightweight right foot key has come a long way over the last decade the e-nero is testament to that says sean it feels quick and fun more so than the hybrid nero more useful spacious and buyer friendly as well than many other evs that you've seen over the last few years it's a very good thing says the express newspaper another glowing review for the kia e-nero which is now i have confirmed from mrs lee at the top of our wish list. She wasn't sure for a long time that we needed a second EV in the family. However, 
I have been gently uh, cajoling, let's say. I mean, some would say wearing her down. I would say gently cajoling her into saying, look, next year, I've got a big life change coming up next year, which I can't talk about yet too publicly, uh, but it's going to be amazing news uh, for our family. And it's going to mean probably more time driving for me, which is, I love driving, by the way. And it's uh, an incredible opportunity that's opening up next year. It is genuinely life changing. And it is, it's kind of the stuff of dreams, still pinching myself however i'll share when i can and it'll mean that we'll probably need two evs in the family i think the kia e nero is something that is very much on our shopping list of course the model 3 is as well but to get the kind of model 3 that you really want it's 55 60 000 pounds and you know Ah, uh, come on. One step at a time. So, so, uh, the Kia e Nero will definitely be a car that I'm watching very closely when those pre, those pre-orders are in. In the UK, by the way, uh, only getting the 64 kilowatt hour version and only getting it in April at the very earliest. That's if I, and I still don't know, by the way, if you know, let me know, uh, how, uh, the Kia is going to be ordered. Now, the Hyundai Kona, just a quick a quick digression. In this country, dealers actually took money from customers. Dealers said, look, we don't know how we're going to sell it yet. This was maybe a year ago or so, but we'll take your deposit, keep it safe, and your name's on the list. Then Hyundai came out and said, we're going to use Click to Buy. It's going to be an online buying system. And the dealers went respectfully, "Um, we've taken money for these cars. So then they had to kind of process the dealer ones along with everybody else. It was an online system, right? There was no preferential treatment three weeks up front you could get buy it in the store and then go online so i wonder if kia will do something different or whether kia will use the dealer network i'd love to know by the way because selfishly i'd like to be reasonably close to the front of the queue uh, when i give them my money well talking of dealers let's talk about car dealers because i think they get a a bad press i think some of them bring it on themselves and actually when you come across a great dealer it's somebody who it can hold your hand through the process. Buying an EV requires a lifestyle change. And for instance, when, when we bought the Renault Zoe, we had signed the paperwork. I'd paid the money. And the chap, who a uh, really, really nice guy, went, oh, how are you charging it, by the way? And, like, I make an EV podcast. So I was like, don't worry. I've got it under control. But if you were someone that was thinking, oh, we'll try one of these electric cars. And then at the end of the process, at at no point in the process had the dealer said to me, you can charge here at this speed. It'll take this long. I mean, that was just never part of the conversation. Look, in fairness, I didn't ask the question because I knew the answers. And a normal, uh, normal, but a regular customer probably would. Okay, so I'm giving them maybe some bad press, but... He still only asked the question when I'd given him the money. So um, let's talk about dealers a little bit. Car Dealer Magazine uh, has been writing. This is a trade magazine that I came across. And they've been writing for the car dealers who subscribe to this magazine website. uh, Say that dealers should ensure that they are understanding all of this new technology. And some of the common misconceptions that surround EVs so that they can provide expert advice and sell the benefits to customers. The future begins now, says Car Dealer Magazine. The average journey time, they remind their dealers who read their magazine, the average journey in the UK is 8.7 miles. 8.7 miles is the average. Man, we get het up about range sometimes, don't we? Most fully electric vehicles these days, at the bottom end of the market, will do 100 miles. And 200 miles is going to be the new normal very, very soon. In addition to this, most vehicles sit unused for long periods of time. Car Dealer Magazine telling its car dealer readers, remind your customers that your car sits doing nothing nearly always. And so if you can charge at home or at work, then every time you get in your car... It has a full battery. Now, they've done a little top tips in infographic, which I'm going to give to you now. See if you agree or disagree with this. Top tip number one, advice given to car dealers, appoint an EV subject matter expert on your forecourt and support customers and your team. Number one, agree. Number two, think about how you will upskill service departments in the technology or partner with a service centre that does it already. Absolutely. Number three, 
Consumer confusion is one of the biggest problems facing the EV sector. How can you help consumer confusion through your vehicle descriptions online? Number four, install a charging point in your dealership to show consumers how easy it is to charge. Yeah, absolutely. The, uh, the, the, the Renault main dealer that I bought the Zoe from has one installed. He didn't mention it, didn't point out where it is. I had to go find it myself. And that would have been nice, wouldn't it? It would have been nice if the dealer had gone, thank you very much for spending many thousands of pounds. By the way, over there is somewhere you can charge it for free. That was never said. And finally, number five, uh, liaise with a provider of electric charging points to support installation at their home. All very good bits of advice. May all car dealers read this in their car dealer magazine. And the final story I'll talk about today is one that is best summed up by the phrase toilet humour. Elon Musk has been tweeting, super fun software Easter eggs coming to all SE and X cars. Sorry, S3 and X cars. <laughs> Had a brain fade there. Uh, before, I, by the way, I love the fact that Elon, whenever he talks about the range, spells it out S3X and not in the order they came. Anyway, uh, romance mode, toilet hub humor mode, and video games. So, with Tesla's latest firmware in December, all models of the SX and the 3 are now able to produce, at will, as much flatulence as you require. Uh, Elon Musk talking about toilet humor in his tweet. The video discovered by Tesla Rati and uploaded by a uh, Model S owner onto a Facebook group has been making the rounds today uh, to turn on what uh, Elon has called the emissions testing mode. I like that. Probably a reference to Dieselgate and VW. To turn on emissions testing, uh, you tap the whoopee cushion under the uh, Easter egg menu. Uh, one option tells the car to... Um, fart on a turn signal uh, flatulence can be adjusted from falcon heavy to ludicrous fart and all the way down to just a boring fart all references to elon musk ventures of course falcon heavy ludicrous mode boring company i love it i love it you see there's boardrooms around the world right now okay there's there's, there's a there are boardrooms full of suits scratching their heads and working out why customers love buying teslas and not their own cars and one of the reasons is because they have a sense of humor uh, and they don't take themselves too seriously so whether whether fart and toilet humor is your cup of tea or not and it's not everybody's at least you know tesla can poke fun at themselves at times and have a bit of a laugh sometimes whether it's making the model x dance to music and having the doors open and and do a dance routine or whether it's this or whether it's the games they're running it's it's at least something a bit different isn't it well thank you very much to everyone who's been joining in with our question of the week this week it's a brand new one as of yesterday set by myev.com and we went through all of the questions that you sent in potential questions of the week picked out the first one and it's this. What is your desired realistic specs for an EV in 2019? And I'm going to focus it down because this could go anywhere, but I'll focus it onto three topics. Range, price, and performance. Tell me your realistic specs, the ones you want to see on an EV in 2019. Not fantasy land, but real. Range, price, and performance. Let me know. Email hello at evnewsdaily.com. That's hello at evnewsdaily.com. You can go to myev.com, check out the uh, research section and answer our question of the week, or you can look at the YouTube comments and leave yours there. Well, there are 137 patrons of the podcast. <laughs> I thought we'd get five. Uh, 137 people later, and the podcast is still growing. And I'd love to be reading out your name at the weekend. Uh, we always do at the weekend, read out all the Patreons, who are exec producers and above. So uh, if you want to join up, it's Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash EV News Daily. And we can add your name to the list. I'd love to be reading yours out. If you want to listen to any one of the 329 episodes are online for free, that's where the Patreon money goes uh, to keep this show going. And if you want to leave a little review, that would be amazing. There's been this weird thing with Apple iTunes reviews either disappearing for some people or the number halving. Mine looks okay at the moment, but uh, touch wood, we'll see. Leave a review anyway if you think it's worth one star or five stars and let other people know about the podcast before they download it. If you want to say hi on the social, search EV News Daily. Have a wonderful day. I'll catch you tomorrow.